Welcome to the Faith Builders broadcast. I am Pastor Philip Steele, and I hope that you're ready to get into some more wonderful truth about the in Christ realities that we possess as believers. Uh, you know, this is so important because we're, we're looking at how that we are heirs and joint heirs with God. And uh, this is a series that my wife and I have been doing. And I want to make you aware that, you know, we want you to have the whole series uh, that's available, this, this, this eight-part series that we're doing. And uh, this is so important because you need to be strong in God and in, in the, the reality of what Christ has done for you. And this series comes with a study guide that contains all the outlines, all the points, uh, all of the principles and the references that we make in the broadcast. And it would just be a great uh, resource for a personal study or even a, a small group study setting. And along with that, we're offering uh, Michelle's new book, Our Provisions in Christ. And this is so important uh, where understanding what you have in Christ uh, is concerned. And uh, so please order yours today. You can see the information there at the bottom of the screen and it will, it'll be there intermittently through the broadcast and you can order it. And uh, I believe that it'll be a great, great resource uh, for you and for your family and uh, 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 for a, any, 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 anyone that you may want to share it with. It will radically transform their life. We want to look today, we looked last time uh, that we were together at the four different words in the New Testament for redemption. And uh, I said during that teaching that I, I think I could have just ran around uh, the studio here uh, shouting about uh, what God had done for us through Christ. But we want to look today at uh, the fact that Jesus was our scapegoat. And we're focusing uh, in these sessions uh, on healing and, and the redemptive uh, aspect of that. In Christ, healing is a provision in our salvation. I often liken, when, 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 when my dad, uh, for Christmas, my, my dad went to heaven here uh, a little over a year ago, and uh, he, for Christmas, he always enjoyed those uh, uh, boxes, uh, I think it was maybe Hill, Hillshire Farm or something, that you could get at the mall, and it had like a sausage in it and cheese and and these different things, and it had all these different compartments in it, and he really enjoyed getting those for Christmas. That was something that he just really enjoyed a lot of, and so we would buy those for him for Christmas, and it had in, in that area, had one area for crackers and cheese and sausage, and, and, and uh, they had something in there called a log roll. I still don't know what a log roll is, but nonetheless, uh, he really enjoyed that. And the Lord showed me one time that that's how redemption is. When you get born again, you get the package of redemption. And when you open the lid of redemption, you see various different parts of redemption that exist. There is the salvation part, saving you from sin. All right, that's, that's vital. That is... Uh, if we could say it this way, that's the most important part of it because without that, you won't move into the others, all right? You don't have access to it. So that's the most important thing. So there's salvation from sin, but then over here there is salvation from, healing, from sickness and salvation from poverty and salvation from a lack of peace. All of that is in the redemptive package. And so healing is a provision in our salvation, all right, in our salvation package. And it's ours now, all right? We talked in the last broadcast about how on the cross of Calvary at the whipping post, all right, healing was put back into our lives as believers. Peace was put back into our lives as believers. And our faith for healing has to be focused on what Jesus has already done. 
already accomplished, what he did and what he took that makes healing ours. It belongs to us. Okay, healing is mine right now. That's a good place for you to say right there, wherever you're sitting, that healing is mine. I see healing belongs to me. So to receive healing through our faith, I have to focus on the fact that Jesus was made a curse for me. All right, he was made a curse for me. Abraham received by faith We read this in Romans 4. It says that Abraham considered not his own body now dead. All right, being 100 years old, neither the deadness of Sarah's womb. So he did not consider his body. He gave his focus to what was spoken, the word of God. The word that God spoke to him. Now, we have an example of receiving healing under the Old Testament. Numbers chapter 21, Numbers 21, verse 8 and 9. I want to read this to you from the Amplified Bible. And the Lord said to Moses, Make a fiery serpent of bronze and set it on a pole, and everyone who is bitten when he looks at it shall live. And Moses made a serpent of bronze and put it on a pole, and if a serpent had bitten any man, when he looked to the serpent of bronze, attentively, expectantly, now notice that, attentively and expectantly, with a steady and absorbing gaze, he lived. Now, this is so important, because the serpents coming into the camp of the Israelites came in because of their disobedience. Sin ultimately is disobedience. It's the Greek word that means to miss the mark. All right? So sin ultimately is disobedience. The serpent we know is an example and a type and a shadow of the devil. It's a shadow of what happens when people sin. They open the door to the enemy. They open the door to the curse. And so these are the people of God, and they've opened the door to these serpents through their disobedience. And notice, Moses went and interceded for the people to God. And God said, I want you to make a serpent and put it on a brass pole. And whoever looks at the serpent, whoever turns their gaze expectantly and attentively will receive their healing. Now, the serpent represents the curse. The curse being lifted, the serpent being lifted up represents what Christ was going to do on the cross. He was going to go to the cross and be lifted up and bear the curse for you and I. And he said, whoever looks attentively and expectantly will receive their healing. Another example of our healing in the redemption is the fact that our sicknesses were completely removed and carried away by Christ. We we read this earlier, but I want you to see this again. 1 Corinthians 6.20, For you are bought with a price, therefore glorify God in your body and in your spirit, which are God's. The word bought there in 1 Corinthians 6.20 is defined as to buy from the marketplace or to redeem. We talked about how that we were brought into this world, into the slave market of sin and sickness and disease, but we were bought out of that. We were redeemed by the blood of Jesus Christ. These things were bought, we were bought, our sicknesses were completely removed and carried away by Jesus Christ. All right, healing was put back Sickness was taken away. Now think about that. If you were carrying a burden and someone came and, and, and it was causing you great distress, there's two things that would happen. If someone came and said, I'm going to take your burden, all right, you would be alleviated of the burden, but what would come back? The ease of not having the burden. Oh, glory to God. 
So when Christ died on the cross, when Christ shed his blood at the whipping post, not only was the price paid, not only was sickness taken away, healing was put back in its place. And it belongs to you now. Galatians 3.13 says, Christ has redeemed us from the curse of the law, having been made a curse for us. For it is written, cursed is everyone that hangs upon a tree. All right? The serpent in the wilderness was a type and a shadow of Christ hanging on a tree. The curse hanging on a tree. Isaiah says that we esteemed Christ smitten, cursed, afflicted of God. Jesus, or, or excuse me, Paul said in Galatians that Christ became a curse for us. Oh, glory to God. That word redeem carries the idea of complete removal. Complete removal. I have been completely set free, not only from the bondage of sin, but from the bondage of sickness, the bondage of weakness, the bondage of pain. I have been set free. Can you say out loud right there where you're at? I have been set free. Teaching is the re repetition of a truth. My brother, sister, you have to hear these things over and over and over and over again until they get into your spirit to the extent that when sickness attempts to attack your body, you respond immediately with, no, sir, I've been bought with a price. Sickness was taken away and healing was, was replaced in its place. And I'm walking free from this in Jesus' name. The scapegoat is an example of the curse being carried away. In Leviticus 16, 5, talking about the high priest, it says, He shall take of the congregation of the children of Israel two kids of the goats for a sin offering and one ram for a burnt offering. The two goats here had different purposes. One was offered to the Lord, all right, the other carried the sin of the people far away into the wilderness. Jesus fulfilled both actions. He was the Lamb of God offered for our sin, all right? One for a sin offering. And he was the Lamb of God that took our sin. Leviticus 16, verse 7 and he shall take the two goats, the high priest, and present them before the Lord at the door of the tabernacle of the congregation. And Aaron will cast lots upon the two goat, a righteous lot, a sanctified lot, to which, which goat would be for the Lord and which goat would be the scapegoat. And Aaron shall bring the goat upon which the Lord's lot fell and offer him for a sin offering. But the goat on which the lot fell to be the scapegoat, or we could explain it this way, the escape goat, escape goat, will be presented alive before the Lord to make an atonement with him and to let him go for a scapegoat into the wilderness. One goat was offered to the Lord and the other was the scapegoat, I like this, or the goat of separation. In other words, <laughs> that goat, the sin was laid on that goat and he was taken away and the sin was separated from the people. The, the goat of separation. Verse 15 in Leviticus 16 says, then shall he kill the goat of the sin offering, this is for the people, and bring, his, and bring his blood within the veil and do with that blood as he did with the blood of the bullock and sprinkle it upon the mercy seat before, and before the mercy seat. The goat chosen to be the sin offering was sacrificed for the sins of the people. Verse 20 of Leviticus 16. And when he's made an end of reconciling the holy place and the tabernacle of the congregation and the altar, he will bring the live goat, the escape goat, the goat of separation. This blood cleansed the temple. Leviticus 16, 21 and 22. 
And Aaron will lay both his hands upon the head of the live goat and confess over him all the iniquities of the children of Israel and all their transgressions in all their sins, putting them upon the head of the goat. And he shall send him away by the hand of a fit man into the wilderness. And the goat will bear upon him all their iniquities, notice this, into a land not inhabited. And he shall let the goat go into the wilderness. By laying on of hands and, and, and spoken words, the high priest, Aaron, transferred the sins of the people onto that goat. He put on that goat the sins of the people. And the goat carried them completely into a land that wasn't inhabited. The word there is a land of separation. Now this is so important because Isaiah 53 and 6 in the Amplified Bible says, All we like sheep have gone astray. We have turned everyone to his own way and the Lord made to light up on him, up on Christ, up on the Lamb of God, up on our scapegoat, the guilt, my God, and the iniquity of us all. Not only the iniquity and the sin, but the guilt that came from the iniquity and the sin. That's, that's why we can say without question that when you get born again, not only are your sins forgiven, not only are you redeemed, it's just as if you never sinned because it's not just the feeling of guiltiness that was laid on Christ. It is the guilt that was, that was yours because of your transgression. You were guilty. You could do nothing to make yourself innocent. But when Christ died on the cross, God the Father took your sin and he laid your sin on Christ, but he also laid the guilt you incurred upon Christ. He carried your sin and your guilt. You're not guilty, my friend. You're redeemed. Oh, hallelujah. You should say that out loud. I'm not guilty. I'm redeemed. Glory to God. 1 John 3, 5 says, And you know that he, Jesus, was manifested. For what purpose, pastor? To take away our sin. And in him is no sin. To take it away. Where did he take it away to? An uninhabited place. He took your sin to hell, the place of the dead, Sheol, Hades. He, he became sin with your sin and he suffered for your sin and paid the price for your sin and freed you from your sin. Our redemption in Christ includes the removal of all sickness and disease and pain. Isaiah 53, 4, surely he has borne our griefs, carried our sorrows. We did esteem him stricken, smitten of God and afflicted. The word born means to lift up, to carry something away to another place, to remove into a distance. It's the same word that we saw there in Leviticus 16, 22, when it says that the goat shall bear upon him all the iniquities of of the people. The same power that completely removed the sin completely removed the sickness. See, this is so important because it was all done at the same time. Now, there are people that I choose to believe they just don't have a knowledge that will make statements like, if it is God's will to heal, he will. The will of God for a thing is determined by if he paid the price for it. And we see in the word that the Bible says Christ paid the price for our healing. So by virtue of that, there can be no question that it's his will. That same person will tell you that whosoever will can be saved. That whoever will call upon the name of the Lord can be saved. They will tell you that it's God's will 
to save everybody. My brother, sister, just take that same logic and understand that if the price for healing was paid at the same time the price of salvation was paid and it's God's will to save everybody from their sin, it's God's will to save everybody from their sickness. When hands are laid on you for healing, that's not when healing is paid for. It was already paid for. That's when it manifests. Your salvation was already paid for before you ever Christ, asked Christ to come into your heart and be your Lord. When you believed in your heart and confessed with your mouth is when it manifests. It was already there. It had been there for 2,000 years. Your healing has been paid for for 2,000 years. It's part of the package. And so if it's God's will to save everyone from their sin, it's God's will to heal everyone which came on people because of sin. Not because necessarily they sinned, but because sin came into the earth. Glory to God. Do you see that? So say it out loud. I believe it's God's will to heal me. I believe the price was paid for my healing. Amen. That's so important. The Lord wants us to focus on the fact that Jesus removed sin and sickness and was made a curse for us. You will never find a provision for sickness under the blessing. You will find a provision for sickness under the curse. All you have to do is read Deuteronomy chapter 28, beginning at about verse 14 or 15 to the end of the chapter. And you see the curse outlined. And it, it, it uh, uh, mentions things like blindness, fever, stroke, uh, heart issues, other sicknesses, sicknesses cleaving to your body, the botch, the itch. Man, that, that just sounds nasty, the botch. I mean, how would you like somebody say, uh, uh, you ask somebody, hey, what's wrong with you? <laughs> I got the botch. That, that, that just sounds bad. Well, it is. It's under the curse. <laughs> Amen. Somebody says, I got the itch. You just want to move away from them, all right? But the point is, it's under the curse. Under the blessing, God said, I will remove sickness and disease from your midst, and I'll bless your bread and your water. As one preacher that I really enjoy would say, that's good gospel news. That's good news that Christ has redeemed us from that. That has to become your focus. Remember what it said in the book of Leviticus? Whoever attentively and expectantly looks at the serpent on the pole will live. Jesus told Nicodemus, I have to be lifted up from the earth so I can draw all men unto me. I want you today to begin to attentively and expectantly look to Jesus as your healer and look to him as one that not only will heal you, but one who has already healed you. Anything that was done in the past is still done. Anything that was accomplished on the cross stayed accomplished. He doesn't have to heal me in the sense of doing it the healing has already been done. Now it's the receiving on my end. Now, how do you receive something? If I came up to you and said, I have a $100 bill for you, how would you receive it? You just reach out and receive it. Right now, wherever you're at, I want you to just symbolically reach out your hands and I want you in your mind's eye, in your spirit, to see 
the Lord Jesus standing there holding your healing and he's saying, will you receive it? Just reach out and take it because it's already yours. And say this out loud, Jesus, I receive my healing today in the name of Jesus. Well, I'm so glad that you joined me for this edition of the Faith Builders broadcast. And uh, on my next session with you, we're going to get into some more of this. But God is so good and he wants you to be healed and well and whole. And remember, we love you with all of our heart. We're so grateful for you being a partner with this ministry in the name of Jesus. So until I see you next time, this is Pastor Philip Steele reminding you to keep the switch of faith turned on, build your faith, and frame your world by the Word of God. God bless you. The person who has received Jesus as Lord has been changed from the inside out. The Bible says that we are born again as a new creature. This new life in Christ comes with a covenant, complete with benefits, rights, and provisions. God's covenant with the believer provides healing for our bodies and God's blessing over our finances. In this 12-part series, In Christ Volume 2, you will learn about the stripes of Jesus and how they provide healing to our bodies, how God's provided health as a covenant right, the blessing and how it operates, your place in the family of God as an heir with a full inheritance, and much more. Whether you are a newly saved believer or someone who has walked with the Lord for many years, this teaching will help you recognize the things that belong to you in Christ. This inspirational 12-part series is available in digital or physical formats starting at just $20. In addition, we are offering Michelle's newest book, Our Provisions in Christ an in-depth study of our health, wealth, and inheritance. Michelle still guides us through the Bible, uncovering the evidence of what presently belongs to us through the covenant. With an emphasis on the healing and financial aspects of our redemption, Pastor Steele outlines our provision. With great clarity, she establishes us in the knowledge of our inheritance, providing a foundation for the Holy Spirit to further reveal the specifics of what belongs to us as heirs of God. This essential book about the provisions that belong to you as a believer in Christ Jesus can be yours for just $15. Don't miss this special offer. The 12-part series, In Christ, Volume 2, and the companion book, Our Provisions in Christ, will open your eyes to see God's heart as your provider so you can walk with the supply of His kingdom. Call the number on your screen or go to buildfaith.net to order. Join us at buildfaith.net for faith building teaching and live services from your computer, phone, or tablet. You can also watch live services on Sundays, Wednesdays, and special events.